You've no doubt heard the term hazard communication and the acronym MSDS, short for Material Safety Data Sheet. The hazard communication standard requires employers to train employees about the hazards of chemicals and substances in the workplace. In 2003, the United Nations adopted the globally harmonized system of classifying and labeling chemicals. Here's a new acronym you'll be hearing a lot more in the future, GHS. The GHS includes criteria for the classification of health, physical, and environmental hazards, as well as specifying what information should be included on labels of hazardous chemicals, as well as safety data sheets. Since 1992, the United Nations have been working to create and enhance a globally harmonized system for the classification and labeling of chemicals that can be used by importers, distributors, and manufacturers worldwide. The United States was an active participant in the development of the GHS and is also a member of the UN bodies established to maintain and coordinate implementation of the system. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, has mandated changes to the existing hazard communication standard that adopt the globally harmonized system. In this video, we'll go over information about the new globally harmonized system of hazard communication. Specific changes to be discussed include new container label formatting, product identifiers, signal words, pictograms, hazard statements, precautionary statements, and safety data sheets. On or before June 1, 2015, all of the following changes to the hazard communication standard will take effect. Material safety data sheets, or MSDS, will become safety data sheets, or SDS. The new SDS will serve the same purpose as the old MSDS. The SDS will be in a standardized format and easier to read. Labels on hazardous chemicals will include pictograms which visually identify the main hazards. Signal words will be required on all labels where hazards exist. The signal word warning will indicate less serious risks and the signal word danger will indicate more serious risk. Hazard statements will be required on labels to explain what the hazard is. Precautionary statements will be required to explain what you should do to protect yourself from the hazard. All labels will be required to have pictograms, a signal word, hazard and precautionary statements, the product identifier, and supplier identification. Labels will vary but must still contain all the following elements. Product identifier. This can be the chemical name, code number, or batch number. The manufacturer, importer, or distributor can decide the appropriate product identifier but the same product identifier must be on both the label and in section one of the SDS. There are two signal words in the GHS system, danger and warning. These signal words are used to communicate the level of hazard on both the label and the SDS. The appropriate signal word to use is set out by the classification system. For example, the signal word for self-heating substances and mixtures Category 1 is danger, while warning is used for the less serious Category 2. There are occasions where no signal word will be called for. The GHS will require pictograms on labels to alert users of the chemical hazards to which they may be exposed. Each pictogram consists of a symbol on a white background framed within a red border and represents a distinct hazard. The pictogram on the label is determined by the chemical hazard classification. There are eight pictograms required by the new standard and one that is optional. The health hazard pictogram is used for chemicals that pose a risk to your health if used improperly. The flame pictogram indicates there is a risk of fire and you should be especially concerned about ignition sources and combustible materials. The exclamation mark pictogram will usually be used in combination with a health hazard pictogram to signify particular health risks which are less severe than the skull and crossbones category. The skull and crossbones pictogram will usually be used in combination with a health hazard pictogram to signify particularly hazardous chemicals. Chemicals with acute toxicity are chemicals that will produce adverse effects following a single dose of the substance. The gas cylinder pictogram alerts you to the physical hazards inherent in the use and storage of compressed gas. The corrosion pictogram should prompt you to be especially aware of PPE and storage requirements. 
Chemicals marked with an exploding bomb pictogram pose a significant physical risk and should be treated with extreme caution. Oxidizers are chemicals that produce additional oxygen in an environment which may cause or contribute to the combustion of other materials. These chemicals will be indicated with a flame over circle pictogram. The environment pictogram is a non-mandatory category. I've included it here for your information. Hazard statements are used to describe the nature of the chemical hazards, including where appropriate, the degree of hazard, all of the applicable hazard statements must appear on the label. Hazard statements may be combined where appropriate to reduce redundancies and improve readability. Precautionary statements are defined as a phrase that describes recommended measures that should be taken to minimize or prevent adverse effects from exposure to hazardous chemicals or improper storage or handling. The new GHS standard requires that chemical safety data sheets consist of 16 specific sections. Section 1, Identification includes product identifier, manufacturer or distributor name, address, phone number, emergency phone number, recommended use and restrictions on use. Section 2, Hazard Identification, includes all hazards associated with the chemical and required label elements. Section 3, Composition Information on Ingredients, includes information on chemical ingredients and trade secret claims. Section 4, First Aid Measures, includes important symptoms, effects, acute, delayed, or required treatment. Section 5, Firefighting Measures, lists suitable extinguishing techniques and equipment, chemical reactions as a result of fire. Section 6, Accidental Release Measures, lists emergency procedures, protective equipment, proper methods of containment and cleanup. Section 7, Handling and storage lists precautions for safe handling and storage, including incompatibilities. Section 8, Exposure Controls and Personal Protection lists OSHA's permissible exposure limits or PELs, threshold limit values or TLVs, appropriate engineering controls, and proper personal protective equipment. Section 9, Physical and Chemical Properties lists the chemical's characteristics. Section 10, Stability and Reactivity, lists chemical stability and possibility of hazardous reactions. Section 11, Toxological Information, includes routes of exposure, related symptoms, acute and chronic effects, and numerical measures of toxicity. Section 12, Ecological Information, provides information to evaluate the environmental impact of the chemical if it were released to the environment. Section 13, Disposal Consideration, provides guidance on proper disposal practices, recycling or reclamation of the chemical or its container, and safe handling practices. Section 14, Transport Information, provides guidance on classification information for shipping, transporting of hazardous chemicals by road, air, rail, or sea. Section 15, Regulatory Information, identifies the safety, health, and environmental regulations specific for the product that is not indicated anywhere else on the SDS. Section 16, Other Information, includes the date of preparation or last revision of the SDS. For more information on the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals, visit this website.